Welcome back, I'm Kang. This video is a continuation of our beginner avatar series. Check out our channel and playlists for the other parts. In this section, we'll cover importing and uploading your avatar. Let's get started. If your avatar is in the form of a Unity package, you can simply import it by double-clicking the avatar's Unity package file while your project is open. Once imported, the Unity package may come with its own scene file. If it does, open that now. We'll be talking about how to manually import an avatar next, so if yours came in a Unity package, you can skip ahead to the section named Avatar Descriptor. If your avatar comes as an FBX model with textures, there are a few more steps, so let's go over those. If you'd like to follow along, we'll be using the example files provided at this link in the description. Okay, let's make a new folder in our Project Assets folder labeled Avatar. Now, let's drag in all the files that came with our model. In this case, it's an FBX and two texture files. Once imported, click on your FBX file in Unity, and in the inspector, under Rig, change the animation type from Generic to Humanoid, and click Apply to automatically map the avatar's bones to Unity's built-in Humanoid avatar system. This automatic mapping might need a little cleanup, so let's click the Configure button here. Most avatars will not use the upper chest or jaw bones. Some may not use the toe bones. But this avatar is missing more than that. Look here, the chest bone isn't mapped. Let's click this little circle to the right and type in chest to search for an appropriate bone. Looks like we found it. Double click on it to plug it into the rig. Now click on the head button here. We can see that the neck bone also isn't mapped. Let's repeat the previous steps to map it. Click this little circle and search for neck. There it is, double click to plug it in. If you're curious, these bones fail to map automatically because this avatar's neck doesn't have any mesh. When a bone isn't connected to any part of the mesh, the auto-mapping can fail. Last, let's check what's mapped to the jawbone. If its label is something like hair or eye or anything that's not a jaw, you should unmap this bone by clicking this little circle and pressing the delete key. Our example avatar doesn't have a jawbone. Now, I'll click the apply button at the bottom, and then click the done button. The texture files I just imported will need to be mapped to some materials so that we can apply them to our model. Let's make those materials by right-clicking in our avatar folder, choosing Create, and then choosing Material. I'll name it Avatar Material. By default, this will be using the Unity Standard Shader. It's possible to use other built-in shaders or one that you've downloaded by selecting them here. But for now, I'll continue with the Standard Shader. Under Albedo, I'll click this little circle to plug in my texture file. To prepare a material for the other texture file, I'll quickly duplicate this first material by selecting it in my Project tab and pressing Ctrl D. The duplicate will have a number at the end. Here, it's Avatar Material 1. I'll select this material and plug in my other texture. Now I'm ready to put my avatar in the scene. I'll select my FBX file and drag it directly into the hierarchy like this. My avatar is visible, but it doesn't have our materials applied. In the hierarchy, I'll click on the triangle dropdown next to my avatar to look inside for the body mesh and select it. In the inspector, I'll look for the section labeled Materials and click these small circles to plug in the materials I just made. You might need to do a bit of trial and error to find which material goes in which slot. Also, some avatars will have more than one mesh, so repeat this process for each one. And now I can see my avatar with the materials applied. At this point, if you want to select the materials in your Assets folder, you can tweak around with the settings in the Standard Shader. When you like what you see, you can move on to configuring your avatar with the VRChat SDK. To describe how your avatar should behave in VRChat, our SDK uses something called the VRC Avatar Descriptor. We need to add this to the avatar. In the hierarchy, click on your avatar, and in the inspector at the bottom, click the Add Component button. In the search menu that pops up, type VRC Avatar Descriptor and click on it when it appears below. Now we can get started telling VRChat how the avatar should behave. First, we'll set the view position. Click Edit here and use the Transform Gizmos to position it roughly between your avatar's eyes. You can click this little cube here for a flat view, and click on the cones to view from the side to really dial it in. That looks pretty good. Click Return to finish editing the view position. Next, we'll set up Lip Sync. We'll click the Auto Detect button here and go with the defaults that the SDK detects. If that worked, you can skip this next subsection about when Auto Detect fails. If the Auto Detect fails, you can try manually assigning the mesh and Visine blend shapes. In particular, if your model has a separate mesh for the face, you might need to slot that in here. 
You can check by double-clicking directly on your avatar's face in the scene view and checking what gets highlighted in the hierarchy. Click back on your avatar's base object and drag the previously selected mesh into the face mesh slot here. To manually assign visine blend shapes, you can use these drop-downs. If you can't find any appropriate blend shapes, you can check if you have a jawbone by exploring in your hierarchy. Let's check our model. Looks like there's no jaw under the headbone. If there was, I could have dragged it here and then set the rotation states for closed and open by clicking the preview button and rotating the gizmo that appears. If you don't have a jawbone or a set of visine blend shapes, you can try using a single blend shape to open the mouth. For this mode, select Jaw Flap Blend Shape and choose the single blend shape from the dropdown. If you want to test your avatar's blend shapes, you can select your body mesh and expand the blend shapes section here and play with the sliders to see what they do. Remember to reset them back to zero or they will always be stuck on when you see your avatar online. If you find one that works, you could slot it into the single jaw flap blend shape dropdown. Be aware that if you reserve a blend shape for the Visim system, it may not activate when other animations on your avatar try to use it. If all those methods failed, it's likely that your avatar doesn't support lip sync. Now we can set up eye look so that the avatar will look around naturally in VRChat. Click Enable here. In the eyes section, we need to plug in the bones that control each eye's rotation. Let's go into our avatar in the hierarchy and click these little triangles to explore through our armature's bones until we find what looks appropriate for the eyes. In my case, I have some bones called left eye and right eye. I'll drag them into the matching slots in our avatar descriptor one by one. Next, we'll set up the rotation states on the eyes so VRChat knows how to point the bones. For looking straight, I'll click the preview button and confirm that it looks okay. Next, I'll click the preview button for looking up. Now, I'll grab the rotation gizmo and rotate the eyes until they're looking up. Different styles of avatars might need different amounts of rotation, so just do what looks right to you. Next, I'll do the same for looking down. Click preview and rotate the gizmo. Keeping in mind the view from the avatar's first-person perspective, I'll do the same for looking left. Click Preview and Rotate. And once more for looking right. To finish up, I'll click Return. Last, if your avatar supports it, you can have VRChat control the eyelids. If your avatar has rigged eyelids, you can set up the bones just like you set up the eye look rotations. In our case, we'll be using Blend Shapes, so under the Eyelid Type drop-down menu, I'll select Blend Shapes. We need to tell it where to find the eyelids mesh. So back in the hierarchy, in our avatar, we'll find our body mesh, or in some cases, a separate face mesh. I'll click and drag the mesh into the eyelids mesh slot. In the dropdowns for blink and looking up and down, I'll select a blend shape with a name that sounds right. I can click preview to see if it looks okay. Your avatar may not have blend shapes for looking up and down. In that case, select none. For the rest of the options in the VRC avatar descriptor, we'll leave them as their defaults in this guide. However, there's a vast world of customizable behaviors possible using the playable layers and expressions features in our avatars SDK. Once you're comfortable uploading avatars with Unity, learning about these is a great next step. Check the description for a link for how to learn more about the features of VRChat Avatars 3.0. Back up at the very top of your Unity interface, click the VRChat SDK drop-down menu and choose Show Control Panel. Click on the Builder tab you might see a bunch of issues here the first time you open it. It's a good idea to click Autofix wherever that's available. Let's do that now. Things look much better now. If you have remaining issues here, our public Discord is a great place to ask for help. Just go into the User Support or Avatars 3 Help channels and post a question with the warning message from the Builder window. You're now ready to upload your avatar to the VRChat servers. At the bottom of the Builder tab, under the Online Publishing section, click on the Build and Publish for Windows button. The VRChat SDK will prepare your avatar for upload, and then the upload interface will appear in the Game display in Unity. If it's hard to see, you can mess with the scale and aspect ratio here. You can see your avatar's picture here. You can improve this by playing around with your scene however you want. Any changes you make will be reverted when the game mode closes after uploading is finished. I'll select the VRC cam that appears here during upload, and in the inspector, I'll change the clear flags dropdown to solid color. And under background, I'll select a new color here. I'll adjust the field of view slider here to zoom in a bit, and I'll use the transform gizmo up here in the scene view to move the camera. Now I'll select the scene's directional light and pick the rotation tool here and rotate it so the lighting is better. 
Now I'll select my avatar's body mesh and play with the blend shapes, and explore in the armature and rotate some of the bones to play around posing the avatar. When posing your bones, selecting local orientation here can help. That looks pretty good. Type in a name for your avatar and click the applicable checkboxes, and finally click the upload button. Wait a moment while your avatar is uploaded, and if all goes well, you'll see a confirmation that looks like this. Right now, this avatar will only be visible on the PC version of VRChat. If your avatar is optimized enough, you can also add support for Oculus Quest. See this link in the description for info on optimizing for Quest. If you're following along with our example avatar, it will work, so let's add Quest support now. If you're not going to upload for Quest, you can skip to the next section. The main consideration we need is for using materials with shaders supported on Quest. We could just swap out the shaders on our main avatar, but I'm going to show you how to upload a different second avatar for Quest users to see in place of the PC one. So let's start by duplicating our PC avatar by clicking it in the hierarchy and pressing Ctrl D. Let's name the new avatar Tutorial Avatar Quest. Now let's prepare Quest supported materials. Let's browse in our Assets folder to our avatar's materials and hold Ctrl and click to select them both and duplicate them by pressing Ctrl D. Let's rename them with Quest added to the end so we don't confuse them later. Now select one of the materials and click on the shader drop-down menu here. Choose VRChat Mobile Standard Light. This should keep some of our settings from the standard shader so we don't need to change anything else. However, if you want to, you could tweak stuff here. Let's click on our other material and repeat the process by choosing the shader VRChat Mobile Standard Light. Now, back in the hierarchy, let's click on our newly created Quest copy of our avatar, and again, expand it to find our body mesh. And under Materials, let's drag in the two new Quest materials we just made. As usual, shuffle them around if things look like they're applied in the wrong slots. Now, click back on the base object of your model in the hierarchy, and in the inspector, look for a script labeled Pipeline Manager. Because our avatar was a copy of the PC avatar, it will have the same blueprint ID here. This is good. It means that PC users and Quest users will both have something to see when this avatar ID is worn. If you're uploading a Quest version that was not a duplicate, then you'll need to manually copy this blueprint ID from your PC upload, and paste it here, and click the Attach button. If your PC version doesn't have an ID yet, you won't get one until after it's been uploaded once. So, with the blueprint IDs matching, let's click on the VRChat SDK dropdown and open the control panel again. And just under the Builder tab, ensure that the Quest version of the avatar is selected right here. I'll actually go and disable the PC version by selecting it in the hierarchy and clicking this little checkbox at the very top of the inspector to disable it. When I want it back, I can recheck that box. Now our Builder tab doesn't have a list of avatars, and we only have the Quest avatar active. To upload for Quest, we must first click the Switch Build Target to Android button, and click Confirm on the pop-up. Wait while Unity reconfigures your project as an Android project, and when that's done, click the Build and Publish for Android button. Once again, the Upload interface will appear in the Game tab. Click the appropriate checkboxes and click Upload. Once it's done, it will look like this. To see your very own avatar online, launch VRChat and once you're in-world, open your menu to the Avatars tab. You should see your new avatar listed somewhere at the top. Select it and choose Change into Avatar. You did it! Go off to show your friends and have fun! Thanks for watching! Take care!